These macros are located in the ribbon at the top on a special ribbon called Moodle Quiz. What are the advantages of using this template? First of all, you can use it when you, your computer is offline. You don't have to be connected to Moodle. You can then, when you finish, upload these to Moodle. This would be great if you're attending a conference on a plane ride or riding in a car and want to do some work but can't get to the internet. Another thing is, is that you can add questions in as you think of them. You don't have to have them all figured out at once and it's not a big process to get back into it. If you've gotten some questions from a publisher but they're not in Moodle format, you can use this template to set your questions up so that you can move them into Moodle easily. This template will allow you to add multiple choice, matching, true-false, missing word, numerical, short answer, and essay questions. Other features include pasting pictures into your questions, telling it not to shuffle the answers of a question for up those none of the above or all of the above questions, adding a separate question name, question feedback for specific answers, and comments which will appear in your template but not appear in the upload. The first thing you're going to need to do is download the zip file. Then we're going to show you how to extract the file and start your first document. Find the zip file that you downloaded called Moodle Quiz version 2.1. Open it up and you'll see the file there. Go up to the top to extract files. It's going to give you the destination that it's going to open it in. If that's correct, just do it. Click OK and it will open the files when you're done and you're ready to go. Now go in and look for the file called Example 2. Macros from unknown sources can be dangerous. They can carry a virus. This template is known and the macros are safe. So if you get a pop-up block about macros, click Yes or Enable. If you get a yellow stripe across the screen at the top of your document, click Enable. If you have problems, contact me for help. Then go in right away and do a Save As and save it to the name of the file that you want it to be. This one's going to be Moodle General Quiz. Now we're going to talk about preparing your document. We're going to prepare the categories, add the questions, save your document, and then prepare the document for importing. This section at the top is actually a header that will allow you to write in the category and then slash the name of your quiz. This will help organize your quiz questions. Please do it in halves back from the slash so you don't mess up any of the macro programming that's in there. Now click back down in the document and you're ready to begin. Now let's take a look at our ribbon at the top. This is a special ribbon. You should have these icons on it. This is the Moodle quiz ribbon. The types of questions that we have are, first of all, the multiple choice, the matching, and true-false questions, the leave out a word, the numerical questions, short answer, essay questions. This next section has some other features in it that you will want to use. The paste an image, which I will make a separate video for to show you how to do that. The question name so that you can make a more succinct name than just the entire question. Question feedback and question comments. The last two are checking to make sure all your coding is correct and readying it for import. First, we'll do the multiple choice question. Click on multiple choice icon. It's automatically highlighted. Put your cursor in front and start typing. As you can see, as I'm typing in the navigation block at the left, it's filling that in for number one as the name of the question. Over there, that will help us keep track of how many questions that we have. Go ahead and keep typing. Type your question in. When you've finished, you're going to hit the Enter key. After you type, 
your question and hit the enter key, you're going to see a little green icon. This icon is for the correct answer. We're not going to worry about that this time. We're just going to type in the answers and then hit the enter key. Then I will show you how to change it so that you have the right answer delineated for the question. Okay, now that we have all our answers, we're going to click on the one that we want to change. Click right on it and then go up to the mark as true slash false and that will change that green to red. Then go and click on the one we want, the answer that we want, and then click on the change true to false again. To show that we're finished with the question and answers, we're going to hit the enter key twice. That will take away that little red icon. Then I'm going to click on the question name, click in the box, and just start typing. If we don't do this, Moodle will use the question itself as the name of the question, but this way we can give it a shorter, more succinct name so it's easier to search for if we need to. You can use the multiple choice question to make a true and false question like I did here on number two. An easier way is to use the true statement and the false statement buttons. So when I click on the true statement and type it in, it'll appear in green. I don't have to put in the true and false. That will automatically come up after the importing. If I look at the true statement and false statement at the dot there is green for the true and false for the red. So if I forget which color is which when I go back to do my proofreading of my questions, I can just look up there. And again, just hit the false statement, type in my false statement, and that's all I have to do for those. I can use the question name feature to put a name below this that's more succinct than the whole name if I want to as well. Click enter when you're finished and that'll bring you down to the next question. This time we're going to do a matching question. And I'm going to click on the icon and the insert matching question box appears. And you can either just click in there and start typing or if you're nervous like I was when I was first making this, you can go ahead and delete out what's there and start typing. Now this is going to have something about matching the following types of activities in the Moodle modules and then um, when we hit enter at the end of this line we're going to get a light gray rectangle that we can type our first description in. And then after we type that description we'll get a darker gray box where we can type the answer. And then we're going to do that, go down and do that as many times as we need to, to to put in all of the descriptions and all of the choices that we have to make. So here we are typing. And then when I get to the end of this description, I'm going to hit the enter key and there's my dark gray box. And as you can see, it has me type those at the other end. And then after I hit enter on that, the next light gray box comes up and I start typing there. And it goes back and forth that way until I have in all the choices. And we're going to go ahead and skip ahead to the finish question. This is the only question that you can't end by just hitting the enter key. If you do, you just keep getting more of the gray boxes. Instead, you have to take your cursor outside of the question and click below it and then you're ready for your next question. Before we leave this section of the Moodle quiz ribbon, I'd like to show you how to keep Moodle from shuffling the answers. What you want to do is click inside the question itself and then click on don't shuffle the answers. This will save the question with the box tick that says do not shuffle the answers. I usually like to shuffle the answers in my Moodle quizzes but sometimes there's some that you just can't do that with. Now we're going to end our next question. Our next question in the next section on the ribbon is the missing word or sometimes known as a closed question. This is where you would have a 
sentence, couple of sentences, or even a paragraph, and there's a word missing that students have to put in using their context clues and what they know of the information. This isn't a hard kind of question to put in, except that on this template you're only allowed one missing word per question. So no matter how much text you have in there, you're only allowed one missing word. So if you want more of these types of questions, more words to have to be given, you're going to have to put in more than one question. As soon as you finish typing, you're going to go up and highlight the word that you want to be the missing word. Make sure you get it all and then click on mark the missing word. Then go to the end of the question and hit enter and you're ready for your next question. The next question is going to be a numerical question. That means we want a number answer. It doesn't matter if it's a word problem or an equation for the question. What matters is that we want a number answer. So after I put in my equation, I hit enter and put in my answer. I can also go up and hit the numerical tolerance to put in a tolerance on how close the answer has to be. Not usually used for simple addition, but for your more complex problems you're going to need that. Again, hit the enter key when you're done, and now we're going to do the short answer question. Now for short answer here, I mean something very short. A word, a couple of words, a phrase, something very specific. If you want a sentence or two, you want to use the essay question. So we're going to ask, where can you get help from with Moodle, our school? And our answers are going to be very succinct. After I hit the enter key, I put in one answer. So I'll say the e-learning help desk. And then I'm going to hit the enter key again for another answer that's acceptable, which would be the Moodle needs help link. And then again, I hit enter and add another answer, the help desk. And last but not least, ask your friends. Then when I finish with that, I'm going to hit the enter key and get ready for another question. For our last question, we're going to use the essay question. And you just click in the box and type. I know that in the box it says it cannot be the last question in the document. Um, don't, I wouldn't put it there. But for this, I'm going to just show it to you. After you finish typing in your essay question, hit the enter key and you'll be ready for another question. But for today, we're going to stop right here. If you have any extra numbers at the bottom, you can click next to them and use your backspace key to get rid of them. Now the rest of the ribbon has a few other things on it we'd like to show you or point out to you. The first one is paste image. Now I'm actually going to make a separate video for that one. Um, then question name and question feedback. If you go to one of your multiple choice answers, you can click on question feedback and then give feedback for the, the answer. Now this will be an feedback on each answer. You don't have to give it on all answers if you don't want to, but it will only go on the answers, not to the question itself. As you can see, on each one I'm clicking on an answer and filling in different feedback. Right next to that is the comment. Now the comment is not imported at all, but if you place that in a document, you can do that so that if there's something in there that you want to remember, uh, when you go back and look at this, when you click on that, there won't be a number next to it and the text will be a gray color so that you know that that's something that's not going to import into your quiz. 
the last section that we're going to be looking at is the actual exporting section. So as soon as I finish this comment, I'm going to go up and click on the check layout. And this is going to go through and look for any any problems and it gives me an error message and if it can fix it itself it'll give me an OK message and I just click OK and then I'm ready to export. Click on the export button and give it a name. Don't use the name that's there because you're not going to remember all those numbers. I, will, I usually give it the name of either the category or the quiz. Now you can save it here in this directory or you can save it onto your desktop or wherever else you want to save it. When you've saved the XML you haven't actually saved the Word document. It would be a good idea to go in and save it separately in case you want to go back and check what you put in it later. Thank you for viewing our video about the Word template for quiz question import. Um, we have some other videos available that go into this that will show you how to import it in, and how to set up your quiz. One that will show how to import the pictures along with your questions. And another one that will give you some tips on copy and pasting questions into the template.